Super Vibe is finally here, and it's time for us to drop in and get some dubs, but the problem? Super Vibe is a very complex game, and if you just drop in, you're gonna not know a lot. So let's break down everything you need to know in this Super Vibe Beginner's Guide. Now this channel is your one-stop shop for Super Vibe content. Whether it's news or guides, we got you covered, so smash that subscribe button and let's get into it. So getting started, what even is Super Vibe? Well, it's a top-down hero shooter battle royale. Think Overwatch meets League meets Smash Bros, at least that's what it's being dubbed. Now, when you first open up the game, you're not going to have every single hunter, but by playing in matches, you will level up and you will unlock extra hunters. So don't worry, you can eventually play them all. Now, at the very beginning, I want you to go into practice, mess around a bit with a couple of different hunters, and get a feel for the game generally. And there's going to be a couple of game modes overall. There's going to be Arena, a 4v4 mode that is similar to King of the Hill meets Deathmatch. There's going to be Duos, where you're dropping into a Battle Royale lobby as just two people and a whole bunch of teams of Duos. And then the bread and butter of Super Vive, Squads, which is going to be 12 teams of four, so about 48 players at its maximum. Now, historically, Historically, this has been 10 teams, but they want to go for more in open beta, so it might be 10 at 40 players overall, and it will go up to 48 or even more potentially down the line. Now, all the characters in the game are called Hunters, and there are going to be three different roles currently for Hunters, Controller, Fighter, and Protector. And they are going to relatively match the roles that they're in. If they are protectors, they are meant to help their team, heal their team, or keep them alive. Controllers are going to control the area, control the enemy, force enemies to move how they want to, and dictate the landscape. And fighters are characters that deal damage, get kills, and win duels. But keep in mind that the roles only loosely matter, and each hunter will act very differently from one to the other. So don't get too caught up in what roles you should have in a composition or anything like that, because right now it just doesn't matter now loki's gonna have you dropping onto a really large map and there's gonna be a circle similar to other battle royales and throughout the map there are gonna be mobs or ai enemies that you can kill and then level up and this is gonna be the way that you unlock abilities as you get kills to either mobs on the map or enemy hunters you're gonna be able to level up and then you're gonna be able to unlock abilities where you're gonna have three basic abilities that you can level up and every time you gain a level you're gonna be able to unlock or level up one of your abilities Abilities. Now, at the very beginning, you're going to want to unlock every single ability first. So you get all three and you get access to your full character's kit. And then eventually, you can decide which of those abilities to strengthen later on as you get more levels. And you're going to be able to decrease their cooldowns or increase their damage and other things like that as you level them up. Now, once you get to level five, you're going to be able to unlock your ultimate. And this is a really important thing because ultimates are incredibly powerful abilities that are on a much larger cooldown, as in they are going to be only used in a certain time increment. They're typically going to cost more mana as well, and they are going to be able to change an entire team fight. And if you go into a fight with an enemy team and they have ultimates and you don't, it's going to be very difficult for you to win. Now, speaking of abilities, there are actives and passives. Actives are going to be things that require mana, and every time you use them, they're going to be put on a cooldown where you have to wait a certain amount of seconds to get them back and to use them again. And if you have the mana to use them, you can use them again at that time. Passives are abilities that will trigger either as a consequence of your other abilities, or they will trigger automatically when set conditions are met. Some passives are just automatic, and they just are perpetual, which means the effect that it states will just happen at all times. Now, as far as movements and mechanics of the game that you should know about, first off is gliders. And gliders are going to allow you to navigate the map. You're going to be able to cross chasms. You're going to be able to fly along the air when you're getting dropped down. And they are one of your best ways to move around the map. But keep in mind, when you're gliding, you are susceptible to getting spiked. And getting spiked is very similar to like Smash Bros, where you're literally getting sent down straight to hell off the map. And this is what happens when you take any damage when you are flying anywhere. And even if you're flying on level ground, you will get stunned, slammed to the ground, and it'll be really easy for enemies to follow up on you after the fact. Now, if you get spiked off the map, you're literally going to instantly die. And while your team can resurrect you, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, you don't want to get spiked. So most of the time, if you're in a fight, you would much rather either use your abilities or just jump across chasms instead of actually gliding across them. Now, it's also important to know where to aim 
as a person falls down when they are off the map, you will see a little line and a ball that represents their icon. If you are trying to spike people, you want to aim for this icon and you don't want to just try to aim for their physical body. This is the hitbox that you have to hit if you want to deal damage to someone or spike them when they are gliding off the map and they're not on the normal level playing field. Next up, we have equipment, and equipment is something that you're going to be able to pick up as you're killing mobs, and you're going to be able to find it across the map in various things like treasure chests and vaults, which we'll get through later. But essentially, equipment is going to be what you grab that are going to give your character a certain effect. There are boots that are going to make you quicker. There are pieces of equipment that are going to let you have omni vamp, so you're going to gain health as you deal damage. There are things that are going to increase your ability power or reduce the amount of mana you're using, and the list goes on and on. You're going to want to set up your character with the types of equipment that match that character's kit, which is going to be different for every single character, but it will be really easy for you to learn that over time. It's just depending on what your character wants to do, certain types of equipment are going to be best for them. Now, once you have your equipment set, as you kill mobs and step over equipment that's similar, you will then level up the equipment you have. And if you have a base level, a white level equipment, grabbing another one will turn it into a green. And then from there to get to blue, you're going to need to grab a greens worth of equipment or two basic ones to get to the blue and then three and the list goes on and on and you're going to be able to level up your equipment all the way from a basic all the way to a legendary equipment over time now there's also the ability for you to just press smart loot as you kill enemies as you go over boxes you can click a button that will just assign the loot to you that it thinks is the best for your character and this is a really good tool at the start especially because you don't have a lot of time just quickly grab the loot that you need fill up your inventory and then there's also a bag, where a bag is going to be able to hold tons of items, not only items that heal you, but other items like bounce pads that are going to allow you to fly over enemy teams or navigate through large amounts of the terrain, items that can teleport you across map, and there are just tons of items, and we're going to get to more of those in a second. Now, if you get kills on enemy teams, they're going to drop shards that you can use to either individually level up pieces of equipment or you can level up things like bags. And keep in mind, this is going to directly level up one thing to the next. So if you have a basic level and introductory level item, using a shard on this is only going to be worth one more of that item because of what we talked about previously. But if you have one that's already purple or orange, then you're going to be getting much more value for that shard. So it's a good idea to try to level up your best equipment to make it even better better when you have those shards that you got from killing enemies now moving on to items which are incredibly important in super Vive, there are a ton of items and they're all crazy powerful some of them are passive which means they're automatic things like movement runes that are going to make you more fast there are things that are going to give you omni vamp and there's a ton of little passive ones that just trigger automatically or just add a static effect to your character but then there are active ones things that you have to press and use and be able to use on a dime things that can shoot projectiles things that can throw laser beams, things that can give you a temporary shield. The list goes on and on. There are so many items, and a lot of them are really powerful, and some of them are really fun. So grab them, try them out, make sure to try to use them in every single game you're in. That's the only way to really learn them all, because there's just that many. But in addition to that, there are rare or legendary items, especially if you get an evil key, which you're going to be able to get by killing an enemy team and then finding an evil crate. You could open up these crates to get some crazy powerful items, and some of the most broken pieces of equipment and items are going to be in these crates. Like this one legendary item that's called Radioactive, which is going to allow you to do nine times the damage to people's armors, which I think is going to get nerfed probably before this video even comes out. But it's really, really strong, and there are so many different powerful pieces of utility that you could use and apply that will help you win team fights and just be more effective overall so grab items find the best ones and find the ones you really love to use now number seven we do got to talk about the map and there's a lot to the map of super vibe that you need to know first off there are map passives where when you load into a map there's going to be a set of conditions that will constantly be changing you might start with an item there might be trains on the map and by the way trains are going to navigate you across the map and around the map there might be three times as many trains or trains that move faster and there's a lot of different map passes that can be implemented and i'm sure there'll be many more that they will add later on so make sure you read in that top right corner and find out 
what that map passive is going to be because it could affect how you play that given game. On top of that, there are a lot of different elements across the map. There are bushes that you could hide in that enemies can't see you if you hide in these bushes so you could pop out and get a surprise attack on enemies. There are trees that you can actually break down and will potentially block off certain paths temporarily and even items that can spawn trees that you can use to your advantage. There are water areas that will slow you down unless you have the appropriate items. Ice areas that will eventually crumble and you'll fall in. Lava areas that will deal you damage and the list goes on and on. It's important to understand that terrain can be as much of a disadvantage as it can be an advantage depending on what items you have and how you play around a given area. So sometimes certain characters will operate better in a certain environment and you can force enemies to fight you in that environment and you will have a much higher chance of winning. Now every time before you drop down, there are going to be different places that are hot zones that have specific spawns of weapons or rare armors and things like that where more people are likely to drop there because these things are worth fighting over. And if you win, it gives you a huge advantage going into the middle or later stages in the game this is pretty much par for the course for most battle royales now it can really be up to you if you want to go for these really aggressive drops and fight for some of that legendary loot to give you a huge advantage if you manage to win but there's also a risk there that you could just die or get double teamed or triple teamed by potential teams getting sandwiched in between and of course some characters are going to be better when they're not at full level remember when you drop you're going to have only one ability to start with so some characters can't operate until they have all their abilities and even their ultimate and some characters are actually still pretty effective without those just playing the neutral game or the non-ability based game. Now there's also a day night cycle on the map where things are going to go from day to night and once the cycle goes through there are going to be a respawn of mobs so if you wiped out all the mobs in an area they will eventually respawn after the cycle goes through and also there is a level cap that perpetually changes as the map progresses so at the very beginning the level cap is going to be at four and you're going to be stuck at that no matter how many mobs you kill. Still good to kill them because you're going to be able to get better items and loot, but you're not going to be able to level up past level four. You're going to be stuck there until the next day-night cycle goes through, and then you're eventually you're going to be able to level up to level six and then maybe level eight, and the level cap keeps changing over time. But keep in mind, if you wipe enemy teams, you can actually increase your level cap to a hard level cap. So let's say you're level four and you take a fight with the team and you get to break the level cap to level five. Now your team has an ultimate when other teams do not because they're at the hard Hard cap of four because they haven't killed a team you can go take a fight with another team now that you have your ultimate and potentially win that one because like we said before a team with ultimates versus a team that doesn't have it is almost assuredly going to win now, there's also a storm and the storm is going to creep in over time and you're not going to be able to heal while you're in a storm so if you're really low hp good luck you need to get out of that storm as quickly as possible but at the beginning, the storm is not going to do a lot of damage to you, so you can actually operate loot and potentially rotate back in over time, and you're not under the gun to get right back in right away. So keep that in mind. Later storms will do more damage, but those earlier storms are pretty survivable, and it's just fine unless you get in a fight there and you can't actually heal back up. Now, across the map, there are going to be merchants that you're going to be able to buy items and armor with gold. Gold you're going to be able to collect throughout the map by killing enemies and gathering loot boxes and things like that. And you're going to be able to turn that gold into better armor for you and your team or things like heals, better bags, and the list goes on and on. Now, it's a good idea that you make sure that you combine your amounts of money so that every single person can get the best armor possible. So if you already have a decent armor, you can right-click on your gold, drop your gold for a teammate so that they can buy a better armor or a bag at these merchants. It's going to help your team have more overall survivability, which means more one team fights, which means better loot for all and more likely chance of winning. Now, there are also beacons across the map that can show you enemy locations. So you can use this to find enemies or potentially avoid them. Them, but there are also some items that can forgo this and keep their enemy location hidden so keep that in mind just because you don't see it on the beacon doesn't mean it's hundred percent not there now we do need to talk about healing overall and there's several ways to actually get heals or heal yourself in supervive first off there are certain characters that can heal their teammates or themselves and they're typically on cooldowns but they're going to be able to burst you up with heals burst the team up with heals and keep you all relatively sustained so that's one way to get heals the other way is a Vive Bean that is going to be dropped by killing enemy mobs and you're going to be able to find these and heal yourself up, but they're not going to be able to actually heal you all that much. And if you go to a campfire and go into the pot and actually brew it up, you're going to be able to get brew vibes, turn those Vive Beans into that brew vibe, and those are going to be able to heal you up a lot more and be much better as an individual item. 
And there's also certain characters and items that are going to give you Omni Vamp, which means as you deal damage, you're going to be able to get some health back. Not a reliable way to heal, but is going to overall make you a bit more survivable in a long fight. And there are other special items that are going to be able to heal you up as well that are too many and too various to name. Now, last up for healing, there are going to be campfires that once you capture, you can go to and heal yourself up. And this is going to be a perpetual place that you're going to be able to heal yourself up constantly. And it makes it hard for enemies to fight you when you're playing near your campfire because you're constantly going to be able to get those heals and get that mana back up while you're near it. Now, to give you some more clarification about a campfire, this is a control site that you're going to have to stand on to capture. And once you have it, you're going to get vision of the nearby areas so enemies cannot come into your area without you knowing that they're there, which gives you a sense of security. As you further regenerate your health and mana, you also know that you're not going to get jumped on. And even if enemies wanted to fight you near your campfire, you're going to get constant heals. So it makes it a lot harder for them to win that fight. Not impossible though, especially if they use their ultimate, so keep that in mind. Now in addition to this, if anyone on your team controls a campfire and you can only control one per team, everyone can press B to return to it. Similar to something like League of Legends, you're going to be able to return to that campfire. So if you get split up and one of you is isolated, you could capture a campfire and the rest of your team could press B and return to that campsite and basically just spawn there now also like we talked about before you can cook at a campfire turning those vibe beans into brew vibes which are going to make them that much more efficient and you're going to want to do this every time you go to a campfire and then in addition to that there's a forge where you can pay money to fix your armor but keep in mind that it's going to cost more money depending on how good your armor is so if you have a really really nice piece of armor you could be spending thousands of gold just to get it back to full but it's definitely worth that price it's that much more extra health when you get into your next engagement the last up, you can actually buy the entire campfire, pick it up and take it with you, only to have it drop down anywhere at a moment's notice later on. Because of all the benefits of a campfire, this is a super powerful thing, but it does cost a lot of money. But if you got money to spend, you have that extra money, or you want to source your money altogether to buy it, it could be a really powerful thing for later on in the game. Now, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but let me clarify exactly what armor is and how it's used. So, you're going to be able to repair it, of course, at every single campfire, and it's going to cover over your HP. Having good armor is oftentimes the difference between winning or losing a fight, and you always want to get as good of armor as you possibly can. Someone that has basic armor versus someone that has blue armor is at a huge disadvantage, and oftentimes there are places on the map that you can drop to that have legendary armor there already, and that's going to be a hot spot where people are fighting over it, because that's how good this armor is now after you farm enough gold you can always go to the merchants and get yourself at least blue armor so you won't be that far behind even the people that get the great drops or fight for the really great armor loot now also when you kill enemies they're gonna drop a armor repair that you can use to get your armor to full and it's gonna be free so this is one of the best ways to get your good armor back to full so when you have a really really great piece of armor oftentimes you want to take an aggressive fight even if you get your armor destroyed you can get it back to full and go on to the next fight or stabilize again without spending extra money on it they also do got to talk about mobs and mobs are going to match the level of the stage and there are various kinds from things that crawl in the grounds to things that fly to things that explode there's a lot of kinds and you're going to want to kill them because they're going to drop equipment that you're going to be able to level up your equipment overall and they're good to kill regardless of your cap but they can also level you up and when you first drop and especially at new stages of level cap increased you're gonna want to try to go and hunt these mobs to get up to the level cap as quickly as possible now make sure you're near or a part of farming every single mob that is being farmed if you can be because if you're too far away you will not get the xp credit for it and your teammates could out level you which you definitely don't want you don't want to be lagging behind anybody if at all possible now there's also vaults that you're going to be able to break in and there's a little mini game similar to like gears of war reloads we have to time it perfectly to potentially dent the vault and break in and your teammates are going to have to defend you from little orbs that are trying to deal damage to you you're going to want to try to kill these and get these off your teammates backs and if it's going to hit your teammate you're going to want to walk in it and tank that damage so that your teammate can break into that vault and y'all can get all the great loot which is items and armor inside and you're going to want at least one teammate to help you while you try to break into a vault because it's really easy to miss these it's really really fast the mini game is hard and i think it's even harder when you're under pressure of these little tiny zappers trying to freaking deal damage to you 
Now, the next thing we got to talk about is souls. And there are big bosses on the map that spawn that will provide you with a super bonus. And there are a lot of different souls that you can get that cause things like more overall team damage, a perma level cap increase, or even the ability to teleport anywhere you click on the map. So they're incredibly strong and oftentimes things worth doing, but yet to fight a big monster that takes time for you to kill and often will have a little mini objective built into the boss battle where as you're fighting, this enemies could come in try to potentially fight you so you want to do it as quickly as possible or have information about where enemies are so you know you're not going to get jumped on now i would imagine that this is going to be changed and balanced as we move forward with new souls being added and different souls being balanced appropriately but oftentimes these souls are so powerful that if you get them you can give your team an overwhelming advantage and especially if no one wants to fight and everyone's kind of playing for end game it could be a great thing to do to give your team that much more leg up on the competition as you approach the end of that game now keep in mind you still have to pick up the soul and enemies can swoop in and grab it if you're not fast enough so be careful about that and once you grab it it's going to create a little storm circle that's going to increase that will actually make it so everyone in the surrounding area needs to leave so yeah make sure that you're ready you grab it for enemies can and you're ready to dip out after you do now, there's a lot of ways to die and supervive, but there's a ton of ways to resurrect as well. And you need to know all of them because this is one of the most important aspects of the game. There are stations around the map that can be used once each where if any teammate dies, you can go to these and you can just stand on them. And if you stand on them without dying or getting pushed off, you will be able to resurrect your team there, which is really, really strong. So these are going to be really useful in situations where you lose a team fight, but one of you gets away. And that's why a really high mobility characters that can run away are really premium because you can always get away and res your teammates later on there are going to be some places like the heart that can be used an infinite amount of times constantly resurrecting your team and you just get to keep resurrecting them again and again and again of course enemies are not going to let you do that and enemies know when you're trying to resurrect any of these places so they oftentimes will try to push you and kill you so that you can't resurrect your team now some of these res stations are actually going to be destroyed and you can use money to turn them on which is cool because enemies aren't going to be trying to fight you for these limited res stations and you can just use money to turn on one that's kind of isolated and use it to resurrect your team which can be great there's also most wanted a crown that you get to grab and will show enemies a trail of where you are and if you survive the time which is about two minutes you're gonna be able to resurrect your whole team but enemies know that that's what you're trying to do so they're gonna be trying to chase you down but if you kill enemies or finish them off when they're on the ground, which is an animation where you're going to kill them and get full health, you're actually going to decrease the wanted time and get your team alive that much quicker. So while enemies know where you are, if you're playing in a position that's easy to defend or a place where you could spike enemies, you could still shut enemies down that are trying to chase you and potentially resurrect your team in the process and really clutch up for your team overall. Now, there is also ways to just resurrect people if they just die initially, where you turn into an orb and you can actually move around the map a bit you have a certain amount of time until you just die fully and if an enemy comes over they can finish you off like we talked about with the animation to get full health or they can just stand on top of you and your orb life will drain really quickly if your teammates just stand on top of you you will resurrect over time and there are some characters like a luna that can actually grab you and take them with you so those are characters that are going to be frustrating to deal with and you want to stop them from potentially grabbing their teammates or if you have one on your team they can doink you up run away and resurrect you at the same time now, if you're permadead, even if you get spiked, there will be a box that appears that your teammates can go to and just hold to resurrect you on that box. So even if your orb is no longer there, you could still get resurrected. So from getting resurrected as an orb to getting resurrected as a box to most wanted to res stations all across the map and ones you can buy, there are tons of ways to get your team back into the action. But the last thing that we need to talk about might be the most important, and it's team fights. So when you get kills, you're going to be able to pass the level cap. So you want to often take a fight, especially when you're at that level cap. If you can take an isolated fight that enemies won't third party or jump in on because you don't want to fight two teams at the same time or kill one team and instantly get jumped on by the next and use that to get past the level cap. And then you could fight another team because you're stronger than them because you broke that level cap. 
Now, keep in mind, there still is a hard level cap that will change with the day-night cycle. So if you ever get behind, you can always catch up by avoiding fights, farming mobs, waiting for the new level cap, and then catching up. And keep in mind that especially that first level from 4 to 5 where you have your ultimate, that's the most important. You can still beat teams that have a higher level than you if it's not by that much. They are going to be more deadly, but it's still perfectly possible to outplay them. Unless they have their ultimates and you don't, then it's going to be pretty difficult if I'm being honest. Now, in a team fight, you're going to want to bait out enemy ultimates and dodge CC. Learning enemy ultimates is going to be really important because some of them are oops, I win buttons that lock you in a static animation. Something like Void's ultimate that's going to lock you in the same place. You can't even move, so you got to be really careful of that. Or crowd control effects that are going to stun you. Things like Kingpin's grab, where he can grab you straight through walls. If you get grabbed by that, most of the time, you're going to end up dead. So learning how to play around these things, dodging cooldown, and especially baiting out ultimates super super important and at the end of the day the main mode for super vibe is going to be the squads and that means that communication is key being able to call out what ultimates and abilities enemies are using being able to talk about when you're going in when you're pulling back who's weak who's vulnerable pinging and actually communicating is going to be a great way to potentially take fights because while this game looks like league of legends from the top down Every one of you is going to be actively in every single major fight you take, every team fight you take. So you're going to need communication that is in line with games like Apex, games like Overwatch, and make sure that everyone's on the same page. But another really important skill in Super Vive is identifying when a fight is lost. You don't want to dip out on your team if the fight is winnable, and oftentimes it's really close, where... Everyone is losing people, everyone's weak, and if you clutch up, you can close out a fight and win it for your team. Resurrect everyone instantly, get amazing loot, get upgrades, and, you know, break that level cap. You're riding high if you win a team fight. But if you're definitely going to lose it no matter what you do, dipping out and going to play to resurrect your team might be the better option. And it's easier to stop people from pursuing you than it is to chase people down because if enemies are trying to jump over chasms, you could turn the tables on them, you could spike them down, and there's a lot of ways to potentially shut down a pursuit if you get a little bit of a lead on the enemies. But these are all the core things that you need to know when you pick up Supervive. I know there's a lot, and you're going to learn a lot more as you're grinding the game. This game is a lot of fun, but it's a really in-depth game that has a crazy high skill ceiling. So once you get great at this game, you're going to be able to take over lobbies and dominate, and it's going to be so fun. I really love this game, and I hope you do as well. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below, and please smash that subscribe for all your Supervive content going forward. Thank you. And I'll see you next time.